Hey, how's it going, guys? It's your retro future boy, Ricky Summer here. And today I've come back in time to talk to you about my experience with Fallout 76. So, hey, look, listen, I wasn't going to play the beta at all. I decided, no, not happening. Uh, for a couple reasons. I know you're going to get mad at me for this, but the truth is, I feel very strange and uncomfortable about the whole concept of, hey, give us money in advance, pre-order the game for the privilege to test the game for us. <laughs> No, it doesn't sit right with me. So instead of bitching and moaning about it on the internet, I just decided I'm not going to buy into it. Simple as that. Uh, the second issue was all the beta times are at arse o'clock for Australia. Like 5 a.m. to midday. And if you work, that's <laughs> how you going to do that, buddy. Anyway, so I, I wasn't going to do it. But your wit wit came at me like, hey, yo, dog. He didn't say it like that. But he said, hey, I got three beta codes you want one i'm like oh all right you sweet bastard so this video is brought to you by your wit wit it's not sponsored but i'm gonna pretend like it is because that's i find that funny anyway so fallout 76 does not make a good first impression i can tell you that right now first and foremost i'm in character creation and this Cassidonian savage is tapping away on his special little cherry mx blue switches and i'm like i'm going i'm actually going mad he's also breathing into the microphone I wanted to commit Sudoku right then and there. Why in why in twenty eighteen is this still a thing? Voice over IP on by default during character creation. Anyway, I've got to assume that that's going to be fixed by the time the game actually releases. But beyond that severe initial annoyance, ah, look, the game just feels like a worse Fallout 4, I'm going to be honest. It took about an hour, maybe two hours, for me to really see what was going on and appreciate the game for what it was. But that, that initial uh, tutorial section... And going out into the world and, and following the quests. It's like, dude, this is just shitty fetch quests in an overly saturated, boring world with Fallout 4 gameplay. But the combat is actually worse. But Rick, what do you mean by that? Well, I'll tell you. It just feels very floaty and clunky and stuttery. And the most obvious issue for me is I'll be aiming at an enemy, especially a humanoid enemy. I'll fire. I'll be certain that I missed. But then the enemy is dead or vice versa. Like the hitbox is a whack or something. It just feels very imprecise. Now, what I'm going to say next might be difficult to grasp, but I'll, I'll do my best to explain it. You know how combat was in Fallout three and new vegas it it felt it felt weird and and imprecise and it felt like this is actually like a like a this is a, it's a straight rpg it's a cold hard rpg that just happens to have shooting like don't even trip you know and then in fallout 4 they polished up the sh the the gunplay a little bit and it's not perfect make no mistake but it's much better and it feels more like a shooter <laughs> not a fantastic shooter but very much more like a shooter Fallout 76 feels like Fallout 4, right? It feels like it should be that precise at least, <laughs> but it's not. It's... <laughs> Why? <laughs> now, I feel like this is probably to do with the fact that the game is online, and not online like competitive shooters are online, but more like an MMO is online, you know? So I, I feel like there's, it's possible that we might just have to accept this is this is how it is, you know. Um, your connection to the server, your ping determines how shit or not the gunplay feels. Um, but look, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is something we can expect to be polished up by the time we get full release, or if it, we just have to accept it. You know, this is online Fallout, and that's how it's going to be. I'll be interested to, to, to see which one it is. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of the, like the tone of the game, and this is extremely subjective. I I, you know, I I admit that, but just the concept of running around in in a Fallout game, and there are you know, well, first and foremost, there's all this foliage and whatnot, which that just feels really weird to me. I can't, it doesn't jive with me personally. And then you got these people running around. I'm like, what is happening here? I mean, it's not like I. Do <laughs> 
it just felt so weird, dude. It was, it was not, it was not a Fallout game, you know. But like I said, you know, after an hour, two hours maybe, something sunk in, right? And I, and I saw the game in a completely different light. It's not like the gameplay changed. Nothing about the game changed necessarily. Maybe, you know, I got past the initial, like, fetch quest thing that kind of teaches you how, how to survive. It's, it's really brain dead stuff. But once I was done with that, I'm like, okay, I'm out in the world. I'm, I'm exploring. The music is very different. It's, it feels more lighthearted and, and wondrous. It actually, it felt like something that you would hear in like Guild Wars 2, for example. And that's when it sunk in. I'm like, holy shit, this game feels remarkably like Guild Wars 2. You know, I'm out in the wild, doing quests that I pick up on the way, the the point between exploring and like like that line between I'm exploring and now I'm doing a quest is is very thin. Um just like it is in Guild Wars 2. If you're not familiar with Guild Wars 2, it is an MMO and you're you you can kind of just like pick up quests really quickly and organically and it's the the transition between running around doing quests is really smooth. So you can kind of like just burn through them. It's, you know, it's very little, you know, going back to town, talking to an NPC, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's the vibe that I was getting. And as soon as I was like, hey, this is actually Guild Wars 2 with a Fallout 4 skin, I'm like, you know what? This is a trash Fallout game, but it's actually a pretty damn good MMO, you know? If you, if you compare it to your traditional MMO, where combat feels kind of... Uh, floaty and disconnected and there's not a lot of like depth to anything that you're doing if you compare it to that it's actually pretty damn good all right so let's talk about base building i am unimpressed now i'm not going to say conclusively that base building is bad and you should feel bad uh because after four hours of gameplay i really only had enough resources to make uh, a chest, a turret, and a couple of fences, and maybe a floor here and there, uh, despite the fact that you can actually build the camp from the very beginning. Uh, so I'm kind of gonna, I'm gonna hold off judgment until I can build more of my camp and, and actually, actually do something with it. As it stands currently, I'm not really sure why you would build a camp beyond the, the fun of building it, which is, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I, I like the building, I'm really into it, if you're not familiar with my videos, I've got like four or five different uh, Sim Settlements building series, so, you know, that's my thing. Look, I don't know, I don't know, like I said, I gotta, I gotta play around with it more, but there are a few quality of life uh, features, I guess, uh, as part of the camp building that, that I thought were really cool. So, first and foremost, you can fast travel uh, to your camp at any time, I think, presumably, as long as you're not being attacked. Uh, and the second thing that I really liked was the ability to pack up your camp remotely and move it whenever you want. So you don't have to go back to your camp to pack it up to move it. You can be out adventuring and you're like, hey, yo, this would be an even better place for my camp. I'd love to just move it here. You go into your pit boy you press uh, Z, I think. Z in the Canadian version of the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> That was a bad joke. And uh, and you can just put your, your camp back down. Now, there is a blueprint system, so you can blueprint the position of everything in your camp, and I think you just pop it down, and I guess we'll, we'll put everything back the way it was. Um, alternatively, it just packs up everything that was in your camp and stores it within, like, the camp storage, and then you can replace it if you want, which... Um, I mean, that, that, seems, that seems more appropriate, you know. If you're moving to a whole new location, you probably want to reposition everything. Um, unless you've built, like, a custom structure, I guess you could you could blueprint that. And you do have several slots for blueprints, so you could be like, hey, this is its own building that needs to stay as it is, so we blueprint that. And this is another little, like, we built a guard post, and, and that's made up of several little components, and I want it to stay the way it is, so let's blueprint that as a separate blueprint, and then you can move around whatever you want so you know that's cool i'm 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 reserving full judgment on the camp building for the moment but one thing is certain if you're used to building in fallout 4 modded with such fantastic mods as place everywhere you're probably gonna hate the camp building in fallout 76 because trying to build on uneven terrain in 76 is just a nightmare buddy all right, last but certainly not least, let's talk about PvP. Now, you know, I was reasonably outspoken vis-a-vis -vis my lust for a 
robust PvP system. I don't like wishy-washy PvP nonsense. I'm not, I'm not like totally hardcore dog eat dog kind of, <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy necessarily, but I feel like if you're going to put PvP in the game, make it, make it worth your while and make it fun and interesting and, and have it have risk and, and get the blood pumping, you know, uh, so look, it's not bad, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, uh, I did go on the hunt, <laughs> I did try and hunt my fellow player, so the way it works, you probably already know, there's been like a million videos on 76 already, but the way it works is you come across a player and you can shoot them, now this does very little damage, right, so I guess the theory is that it does so little damage, it gives them time to run away. Uh, now, you can pursue them, and if I, I guess if you're able to catch up with them, and if you have enough ammo, if you're able to hit them enough, you can, I guess, kill them uh, without them really wanting you to. But the moment they fire back, the damage restriction is lifted, and you both do full damage to each other. So, I, I, think, that's, I think that's okay. I still would prefer to have like pvp zones like hey here's a zone that has really rich resources a lot of resources or valuable rare resources so it's hotly contested everyone wants a piece but it's a pvp zone and it's full pvp you know going in that it's going to be pvp and you're in danger right that's that's what i want and that way you you know you know when to be alert you know when to be uh, when, when you're going to be in danger, and you could argue, but hey, yo, Rick, that's kind of shitty, because what if you don't want to engage in PvP at all, uh, you'll never get those resources, well, then that's when, like, trading comes into it, you know, or maybe there's a more difficult way to get those resources, an alternate way, um, more time-consuming, where you're just engaging in PvE, you know, they could do that, that sort of thing, uh, but look, it's okay. It's okay. So, uh, you know, I, I want to be a raider. <laughs> I do. I, I absolutely do. And I think, I think you, you can, I think you can be a little bit of a raider. So when you go on the hunt, as I did, uh, it seems that you get a few caps for hitting them. You get a few caps for killing them. It's not going to break the bank. It's just a handful of pittance, but you get something. And then when you kill them, you get junk. I think you get resources, crafting materials. Now, I'm not sure if you're actually taking them from their body and they lose it, or it duplicates them, uh, so they keep theirs and you get a copy of what they had, or maybe it's just like a nominal amount. Like, you kill someone, it's like, hey, he has some resources. I'm not I'm not sure which it is, but yeah, you seem, you seem to get some stuff from killing people. So, I mean, maybe that's some cool incentive to go on the hunt. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. Then there's also this like revenge system, I think. So when someone kills you, you can you can choose, I think, to let it go or go on go on the revengeance, the <laughs> revengeing, and and I think it shows them on a map or something. I, again, like if I had more time, I'd I'd flesh this stuff out and I'd I'd like take notes and be like, all right, let's test it. This is what happens, you know. But there was only four hours and and we were getting towards the end of the session, I was trying to rush, you know, just trying as many things as possible. But hey, you know what? The PvP is is fun, and and in a point in the favor of it being so, I suppose, low-key and, and low-risk, is it's it's low-risk to, to engage in PvP as well. It's not just protecting uh, the victim, I think it protects the, the predator as well a little bit, because have you ever, have you ever been in a PvP scenario where it's like, I'd really love to attack people, but I'm scared that I'm going to get curb stomped, you know, uh, the, that doesn't happen here, you know, you don't, you don't have that fear, at least I didn't, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to kill people, I'm going to attack people, who cares if I, if I die, you know, because the consequences aren't, aren't that bad, so I think, I think it's a pretty good balance, um, uh, I still would have liked it to be a little more hardcore, but I'm not too mad about it. You do, you do seem to get a little bit of something for for winning fights anyway. And I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty. Look, my EP is fairly engorged because you've just seen me <laughs> take out a level 13 as a as a level six or seven. So, no, I, I'm Frank Ladank is is kind of all that when it when it comes to. Um, hunting people in Fallout 76, so, <laughs> there you go, guys, that's, that's all I'm gonna say, oh, look, one last thing, there's no FOV slider, for the love of, for the love of God, please, 
put in a field of view slider because I'm getting, I feel like a, a racehorse with blinkers playing this game. It's, it's a mess. Um, but look, Fallout 76 uh, surprised me. Terrible first impression. I actually hated the first hour and a half or so. And as soon as I started thinking of the game as a bog standard traditional MMO, uh, to me it actually comes across as an above average MMO. And that was that was a really nice surprise. Uh, I may actually I may actually play it when it when it comes out fully. I think even if my if my friends get it, if my buddies get it, guaranteed you know we'll play together. Otherwise, uh, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Could be fun to make some videos uh, of, but. Hey, look, yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Have you played Fallout 76? Is it exactly what you thought? Is it a little different? Did it subvert your expectations at all? Hey, look, thanks for watching. Taste the game. Be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time. Ricky Summer, out.